81333 on text. Start your message uh, with the word uh, Kent. Now then, uh, let's talk to Adam Cox. Adam Cox we have spoken to in the past. Uh, we spoke to Adam uh, about curing um, arachnophobia uh, not that long ago, but he's also the founder of Hypno Slimming. Adam, lovely to have you back with us. How are you? I'm very well, Steve. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, what's this all about? Slimming through uh, hypnotherapy. Uh, tell us all about it. Yeah, well, the, the, the truth is everyone already knows what they should do to lose weight. They know they should, you know, eat healthy, green, you know, kind of uh, natural foods, exercise more, have smaller portions, and yet they don't do it. And, and the key reason for that is that there is a, a conflict for a lot of people. There is a feeling that um, losing weight is a struggle, it's unpleasant, and it sets up almost kind of like a, an inner conflict in themselves where a mm. part of them really does want to lose weight, but the other part looks at food and associates that with pleasure and fun and socializing, and, and, and it means that it's a, it's a game that a lot of people feel that each and every time they fail, it gets harder and harder, and there's a psychological principle called learned helplessness, and a lot of people that have attempted and, and quote-unquote failed to lose weight on several occasions just are desperate and they feel like they can't do it anymore. Mm. Which suggests, obviously, then, that it's as much as in the mind as anything else. It really is mind over platter. And, um, <laughs> and Very I think, good. Uh, I, I think, I think one, of the, one of the key things that I do as a hypnotist is that everyone's had a time in their life where they've been really resourceful, so you can use regression to take them back to that, that point in time. But equally, I've worked with people that they're highly resourceful in some parts of their life, but not when it comes to food. So I work with a businessman who really into property development. And I said, look, if you ran your business like you try and lose weight, what would happen? And it dawned on him instantly that actually he would quit very easily. Mm -hmm. He would try things and keep changing things. Whereas in his business, he would refine it. He would kind of learn as he went along and, and kind of um, just make better and better choices. So my job as a hypnotist is to take the resources and the thinking strategies that already exist in an individual and then get them applying them to this kind of world of, of weight loss. And, and, and the truth is the, the body is pretty good at losing weight so long as you don't sabotage it. So uh, body fat is not shame. It's not um, stress. It's not anything other than stored energy. Body fat is a uh, rechargeable batteries for the body. And if you get people thinking as body fat as fuel, then actually the goal isn't to lose weight, it's to use up that excess energy. So the way in which you think about um, your body fat is actually quite helpful to making good choices to actually help you lose the weight. Interesting. It, it, it's a fascinating. There will be people, Adam, who um, uh, will be quite sceptical when they hear about hypnotherapy. I'm not. Um, many, many years ago, um, hypnotherapy helped me pack up smoking for, for 12 months, and uh, I didn't even think about uh, having a cigarette and uh, uh, and it really worked for me it was just a, a change in circumstance and what have you and um, stress in life that that broke that spell as it were what would you say to people who are a bit um, a bit of a skeptic when it comes to to hypnotherapy yeah I, I think it's because of the perception of hypnosis that it's control or it's kind of magic or it's kind of manipulation and the reality is we access trance-like states all the time like if you're reading a good book then you you make movies in your mind effortlessly you know there, there's ways in which we access trance states people drive their cars you know they're driving down the motorway um on autopilot they're not thinking about what they're doing so the power of the subconscious mind is actually very powerful and it has a use but if we can drive a car without thinking about it we can definitely eat too much without thinking about it you know we can definitely get into habits where you link an emotion to a food and then let's say as a child, you know, I used to have fizzy drinks at any family party. So as I got older, you associate fizzy drinks with fun and with, you know, connection and things like that. And, and a lot of people are just running the programming that was um, introduced in childhood. And who better than a hypnotherapist to make some changes there that um, you won't even realize because you're you're living that life, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. It makes perfect sense to me. Um, so what sort of things will you do, will you say, f for somebody who is trying to lose weight? Are you going to say that, you know, you, you don't need that 
that that biscuit. You don't need that sausage roll, or you you don't need that can of Coke today. How does it work? Without giving away, obviously, all your secrets, but you know how how would you go about it? If I if I was sat down or lying down in front of you right now, and I need, I'd I'd, I'd like to lose a stone. Okay, I think that would make me feel a lot better. Um, so so where would you? What would you do? Where would you go? Yeah. So you need a compelling vision um, for it. So the reason why a lot of women end up losing a lot of weight for a wedding is that they make a picture in their mind eye of how they want to be for that wedding day. So you need a compelling um, vision. You also need a, a, nu- a nutritionally backed strategy. Um, and, and there's lots of different nutritionally backed strategies. So hypnosis alone won't do it unless you're in a calorie deficit, unless you're, you're eating certain foods that make it biologically possible to get your body burning um, fat. So you need you need a, a winning strategy, but you also need the right resourceful state. So you need to access things like motivation and, and self-belief and, and things like that. So my my attempt isn't to give people suggestions that they already know. Saying that they don't need a biscuit isn't going to help because they already know they don't need a biscuit. They mm-hmm. want a biscuit. They just don't need it. So my goal is to get to the root cause. And, and sometimes um, it, it comes from dark places. Sometimes it comes from you know being bullied or shamed or, or abused in childhood. Sometimes it comes from just picking up habits throughout life. So the strategy is always unique to the individual, but it's it's about reverse engineering and saying, well, you didn't you didn't gain this weight by luck. You followed a particular strategy. Let's let's follow a strategy backed up with good, resourceful states to undo mm. what you've done because you've created this yourself. Are there similarities here then um, with you know weight loss and actually um, breaking away from an addiction as well? Totally. I mean, if, if you think about what an addiction is, an addiction is a positively reinforced behavior that isn't that helpful. So, for example, the, the, the problem with food is that it does feel good and it tastes good. There's a lot of pleasure and emotions attached to food. And, and I think one of the biggest addictions that people have isn't cigarettes and alcohol or even drugs. It's actually food because it changes your biochemistry rapidly. Um, so if people are sad and eating makes them feel better, then you, you can set up an addiction. If people are anxious and they eat when they're anxious, that can set up an addiction because, and here's the thing, it does work. Food works, but it only works temporarily. And then you feel that state again of sadness or anxiety or worry. And then you've got to eat more to make that feeling go away. And that's what creates these kind of addictive loops, uh, what many people would call emotional eating. And, and when you're in it, is it, anyone could just say, oh, just eat less. We all know that. Like that doesn't help. Like you've got to get to the root pattern as to why people are emotionally eating Mm. adam fascinating thank you so much for your time this morning uh adam cox there uh, founder of uh, hypno slimming um bbc radio kent on a thursday morning uh still welcoming your ideas